Hello, it's Scott Manley here, and it's been about a year since Oumuamua came into the solar system and barely stopped to say hello before heading back into deep space. It was the first verified interstellar object to swing through our solar system, and it was only observed for a very limited period of time. Indeed, the last observations were taken in January of 2018, but it's back in the news with headlines such as, scientists say Oumuamua could be an alien spaceship. Obviously, these headlines are leaving out the part where the same scientists say there is more likely to be an old comet. The alien spaceship claims come from the observations showing that the orbit changed during its passage through the solar system. The original paper that discussed, uh, talked about this was non-gravitational acceleration in the orbit of Oumuamua. So they took the exact positional data and it showed a drift away from this. And a scientist would try to model what this drift was and what could be causing it. So they had various ideas. They looked at radiation pressure. They looked at drag due to interactions with, uh, you know, the gas near the sun. They looked at uh, interactions with the magnetic field and the, mag the electrical flows in the plasma and everything. And in all these cases, they found that the asteroid or the object would have to be very, very, very light for this to work. The one only thing they could come up with which made sense was that the gravitational and non-gravitational changes were due to outgassing. That is, as it flew near the sun, the object heated up and deep inside it there were ices that would, it would melt, evaporate through the surface and they would provide a small amount of thrust. Now this effect fit the expected direction, the expected magnitude, in particular the force that they thought they were seeing was an in, followed an inverse square law, which pretty much is exactly what you'd expect if your main source of energy or uh, was solar heating, which it also follows an inverse square law. The effect is also seen in regular garden variety comets that we see from our own solar backyard. So they can actually use models of these comets to figure out what this thing would be doing. So yeah, they, they take a, a model and they fit it and they find that at 1.4 AU, it would be producing about two and a half kilograms per second of water and about one and a half kilograms per second of carbon monoxide and about 200 grams per second of dust. And therein lies a problem because all the images that were taken of this, no matter how they're processed, there is no evidence of any dusty coma, no evidence of a dust cloud around this object. So it's possible that the existing comet model doesn't work for this interloper, which you know could be older than the solar system itself. It could have been floating through interstellar space billions of years before the sun even started forming. Therefore, you know, the comets that have formed with our sun might be slightly different. Now, taking the two and a half kilograms of, uh, of water and carbon monoxide, those are actually below the level of uh, that we would expect to be detectable. But if you remove the dust, well, maybe the dust is bigger grains. Maybe the grains are stuck together due to some sort of interaction between the comet's material and billions of years subject to cosmic radiation. Another problem with the outgassing hypothesis is that we would have expected to see changes in the rotation of the object. Now, obviously the only rotation data we got was changes in the light curve, but that was pretty much consistent through its whole orbit, so there was no definitive observation of changes in rotation. And that brings us back to those recent sensationalist stories about Oumuamua potentially being an alien spaceship. There is a new paper to be published in the next few days, and in this case the author said, well, what if the changes in the orbit were in fact due to radiation pressure? That would mean that the object would have to be very, very light. Instead of being a hundred meter long chunk of you know, debris, chunk of solid material. It could be a very thin shell, a skin less than a millimeter thick. That would make it light enough that it could be pushed around by the light from the sun as if it were being uh, experiencing outgassing. 
And yeah, that would explain why we wouldn't see a coma or a dust cloud. It would explain why, it, or it could explain why the rotation rate wasn't changing. Now, look, obviously, this is the author starting from this hypothesis and then exploring it. So where does that take him? Well, he's, he then decides to do some sanity checks. He says, well, if it was this light, how far could it travel through interstellar space before the drag of the interstellar medium slowed it down to background rate? And it turns out that it could travel 10 kiloparsecs between stars, you know, easily. Um, it could, would it survive the interstellar environment or would it be worn down and destroyed? And at the velocities that it was seen, about 26 kilometers per second relative to the interstellar medium, it, it would have survived just fine. So after doing all this math, the authors decide that they can't disprove the hypothesis that it might be a starship or a fragment of a starship from an alien race or from another star system. But neither do they have any special evidence to support the fact that it is. All they've done is they've, they've said they can't rule this out as a possibility. So it's still a very unique and very mysterious object and we're not going to get any more data on it because it's headed off into deep space and there's no way we will ever catch it until, well, maybe if the expanse ever comes out and we have fusion drives, we might go chasing it down one of these days, but perhaps we don't have to. If you make reasonable assumptions for the rate at which you would see objects coming from our other star systems, it would actually seem reasonable that some of these would get captured by interactions with Jupiter and Saturn and other of the large planets. So it may be that there are objects in our solar system on extreme orbits which have been captured from other stars. And they might have different spectra, they might have some different data, different observa observable characteristics that will set them apart. And so given that, you know, we've got things like the Large Scale Synoptic Survey Telescope coming online, we might find in the next few years that we start to identify candidate objects which could have come from outside our solar system. And those would be logical targets for future space missions. Until then, we will watch the skies. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.